Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the laws of exponents and we are going to explain everything in details. In mathematics, there are different laws of exponents. All the rules of exponents are used to solve many mathematical problems which involves repeated multiplication processes. So the law of exponents simply the multiplication and division operation and help to solve problem easily. So in this video, we are going to discuss different kinds of laws of exponents and we are going to explain everything in details. So let's start and let's have an example. On the first one, we have the product rule. So when we say product rule, if we have a raised to m multiplied by a raised to n, where a is a base and m and n are exponents, it will give us a raised to m plus n for positive integers m and n. So basically, when we say product rule, if we are going to multiply integers with the same base, all we have to do is to copy the base and then add their exponent, that is m plus n. So let's have an example. On number 1, we have m raised to 5 multiplied by m raised to 7. So as you can see, we have the same base. All you have to do is to copy the base. And then let's add the exponent that is 5 plus 7. And to simplify, this will be m raised to 5 plus 7 that is 12. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have 3 raised to 3 multiplied by 3. So if we are going to write this one, this will be 3 raised to 3 multiplied by 3 raised to 1. Since we have the same base, all we have to do is to copy the base and add their exponent. That is 3 plus 1. So this will be 3 raised to 3 plus 1. That is 4 and 3 raised to 4 that is 81 because you are going to multiply 3 4 times to itself and this will be our answer next we have the quotient rule so when we say quotient rule if base a is not equal to 0 then a raised to m divided by a raised to n where m and n are exponents it will give us a raised to m minus n if m is greater than m so basically when we are talking about quotient rule if we are going to divide integers with the same base all you have to do is to copy the base and subtract their exponents so let's have an example on example number one we have x raised to 10 divided by x raised to 6. So as you can see, we have the same base. All you have to do is to copy the base and subtract their exponents. That is 10 minus 6. And to simplify, this will be x raised to 10 minus 6, that is 4. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have a raised to 5, b raised to 4, all over a square b. So to simplify, let us write the base a and base b. The exponent of a on the numerator is 5, and the exponent of a in the denominator is 2. So let us subtract, that is 5 minus 2. While on the other one, we have 4 minus 2. 1. So this will be a raised to 5 minus 2, that is 3. And then we have b raised to 4 minus 1, that is also 3. And this will be our answer. Next, we have power of a power. So when we say power of a power, if we are going to have a raised to m raised to n, where a is a base and m and n are exponents, it will give us a raised to m n for positive integers m and n. So let's have an example. On number 1, we have n raised to 4 raised to 5. So to simplify, let us multiply 4 and 5, that is n raised to 4 times 5. It will give us n raised to 4 times 5, that is 20. And this will be our answer. 
On example number 2, we have 4 square raised to 2. So to simplify this one, let us distribute the exponent. It will give us 4 raised to 2 multiplied by 2. So this will be 4 raised to 2 times 2, that is 4. So if we are going to expand this one, this will be 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. That means you are going to multiply 4 4 times to itself. So 4 multiplied by 4, that is 16. Times 4, that is 64. And 64 times 4, that is 256. And this will be our answer. Another way to simplify this one, let us simplify first 4 squared. 4 squared, that is 4 times 4, that is 16. And 16 squared, it will give us 256. This will be our answer. Next, we have product of a power. So when we say product of a power, if we have base AB raised to exponent M, it will give us A raised to M, B raised to M for positive integer M. So basically, when we are talking about product of a power, all you have to do is to distribute the exponent. That is A raised to M, B raised to M. So let's have an example. On example number 1, we have quantity xy raised to 5. So to simplify, let us distribute the exponent on variable x and y. So this will be x raised to 5, y raised to 5. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have quantity 3xy squared raised to 4. So to simplify, let us distribute the exponent. This will be 3 raised to 4. Let's have x raised to 4. And let's have y squared raised to 4. 3 raised to 4, that is 81. That means you are going to multiply 3 4 times to itself. And that is 81. And let us have x raised to 4. Let's have y 2 times 4, that is 8. And this will be our answer. Next, we have quotient of power. So when we say quotient of power, if b is not equal to 0, then quantity a over b raised to exponent m, it will give us a raised to m over b raised to m. So when we say quotient of power, all we have to do is to distribute the exponent on the numerator and denominator. So let's have an example. On number 1, we have quantity m raised to 5, n over p raised to 3. So to simplify, let us distribute the exponent on the numerator and denominator. So this will be m raised to 5 raised to 3. And then we have n raised to 3 all over p raised to 3. So let us simplify. Let us have m and then 5 times 3, that is 15. Let us have n raised to 3 all over p raised to 3. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, we have quantity 3 a raised to 5, b raised to 4 all over 2 c raised to 3 raised to 2. So to simplify, let us distribute the exponent on the numerator and denominator. So this will be 3 raised to 2, a raised to 5, raised to 2, and then b raised to 4, raised to 2. On the denominator, we have 2 raised to 2, c raised to 3, raised to 2. 3 square, that is 3 times 3, it will give us 9. And then let us have variable a, and then 5 times 2, that is 10. Then we have b, that is 4 times 2, that is 8. On the denominator, let us have 2 square, that is 4. Let us have c, that is 3 times 2, that is 6. And this will be our answer. Next, we have the zero exponent. So when we say zero exponent, basically any real number a 
except 0 raised to 0 is always equal to 1. So let's have an example. On the first example, we have 7x raised to 0. So as you can see, only the variable x is being raised by 0. So this will be 7 and x raised to 0, that is 1. So this will be 7 times 1, that is 7. And this will be our answer. On example number 2, quantity 7x raised to 0. So as you can see, 7 and x is being raised to 0. And our answer is 1. On example number 3, we have quantity negative 5 raised to 0. So as you can see, negative 5 is also included in the parentheses. Therefore, our answer is 1. On example number 4, we have negative 5 raised to 0. So only 5 is being raised to 0. So this will be negative 5 raised to 0, that is 1. And our answer that is negative times 1 is negative 1. And lastly, we have the negative exponent. So when we say negative exponent, if we are going to have a raised to negative n, to eliminate the negative sign on the exponent, all you have to do is to get the reciprocal. That is 1 over a raised to n for a is not equal to 0 and n is any real number. So let's have an example. On number 1, we have x raised to negative 6. So to eliminate the negative sign on the exponent, let us have the reciprocal. It will give us 1 over x raised to 6. And this will be our answer. On number 2, we have 5 raised to negative 2. So this will be 1 over 5 square and we can simplify this one it will give us 1 over 5 square that is 5 times 5 and that is 25 on number 3 we have 1 over x raised to negative 5 so as you can see the exponent of x is in the denominator so to eliminate the negative sign let us put this one on the numerator so this will be x base to 5. On example number 4, we have 2 raised to negative 2 raised to 3. First, let us simplify the expression inside the parentheses. This will be 1 over 2 raised to 2 raised to 3. And then, let us have 1 over 2 raised to 2, that is 4. And then let us have the exponent 3 and then let us distribute the exponent on the numerator and denominator so this will be 1 raised to 3 that is 1 and then 4 raised to 3 that is 4 multiplied 3 times to itself that is 64 and this will be our answer on example number 5 we have m raised to negative 2, n raised to 3, all over x squared, y raised to negative 5. So to eliminate all the negative exponents on the numerator and the denominator, let us put this one on the denominator and let us put y raised to negative 5 on the numerator. So this will be n raised to 3. Let us move this one on the numerator to eliminate the negative sign. On the exponent, this would be y raised to 5. And then, let us have x squared. Then we have m. Let's move this one on the denominator. So this will be m squared. This will be our answer. On our last example, we have 2 raised to negative 2, x squared, y raised to 3, all over 4 raised to negative 1, x raised to 0, y raised to negative 2. So to simplify this one, let us eliminate all the negative exponents in the numerator and the denominator. So let us move this one on the denominator and let us put 4 raised to negative 1 on the numerator and also y raised to negative 2. And x raised to 0, that is 
1. So this will be x square and then y raised to 3, y square, and let us have 4, and then we have 2 raised to 2, and then multiply it by 1. So let us simplify. So this will be 4, and then let's have x square. Let us copy the variable y, and let us add 3 plus 2 because we have the same base. That is 5, and then 2 square, that is 4 times 1. 4 times 1, that is 4, and we can cancel 4. So this will be x square y raised to 5, and this will be our answer. So I hope you've learned from this video. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless us all.